this whole series has like destroyed me like i am crying more than i've cried probably in my whole life oh my god i'm not okay i'm not okay this girl has been through enough like stop putting her through this stuff this is it's too much now it's like oh my god it's devastating it's really sad um oh my god no not crying again um it's really sad <laughs> my name is Annie welcome to or back to my channel and today I'm doing something that I've been excited about um, and wanted to do for a really long time and that is reading all of the Hunger Games books including the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes which I haven't read before um, I saw the new movie already I really liked it not as much as any of the movies for these but I'm gonna actually go through and rewatch some films as I'm reading these and I'll give you my thoughts on both the films and the book. From what I remember, the films were amazing adaptations. Um, but yeah, so I am really excited. I think I'm most excited to read <laughs> Catching Fire because it was always my favorite book. But I am also really excited to see what The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes is gonna do. It's quite chunky. I wanna see if it's different like a lot from the film because I liked the film but I didn't like love it like some people did I thought it was really well done but it just didn't like hit the same as these ones did I kind of imagine that this is gonna go by fairly quickly like these novels are all quite short and from what I remember they're really really fast reads so I'm just excited to see if this series holds up although I, I'm not really doubting it like I'm pretty sure it does. Um, and I also want to see if there's anything new I can get out of it, considering that I first read it when I was a teenager and now I'm an adult and I want to see, I don't know, I, I want to see if it's still like super relevant to our lives today. And I imagine that it is, but I'm just really excited to go into this. Okay, hi. It's much later in the day, or should I say night now? Um, and I'm finally reading The Hunger Games, but I have something to say. No, okay, first I'll tell you a synopsis. In case you didn't know, The Hunger Games is about this girl named Katniss, and she lives in a dystopian world where there was this big war between two groups of people, and the people that won now live in the capital and are like the ruling class. They divided up all the losers into 12 districts and Katniss lives in district 12 with her mom and her sister who she provides for. Um, it's a very like poor town. They're not really thriving and Katniss hunts for them and like provides all of the food that they need to survive. Um, and every year there is this thing called the Hunger Games where two tributes from each district are chosen to fight to the death in an arena for the people in the capital and all the districts to watch as entertainment. But like the people in the districts are just scared. So they're not really watching it for fun. Um, and Katniss's sister gets chosen for the reaping, but Katniss decides to volunteer herself as tribute and go and compete in the Hunger Games instead. Um, so that's the premise, in case you had no idea what Hunger Games is about, which you must be living under a rock. Okay, sorry, my phone ran out of storage, so I had to like do a whole thing. But on page eight, <laughs> um, we see Gail, and she's like describing how he looks. And then she goes, he could be my brother. Straight black hair, olive skin, we even have the same gray eyes. But we're not related. At least not closely. <laughs> so they could be like cousins? Just food for thought. Like honestly, it doesn't really matter to me, but I was just like, okay, okay, Miss Collins. Like, it's a little shady. Why don't we just say that they're not related? Like, we didn't have to, we didn't have to go there. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm gonna try not to think about it. But, um, the other thing is, like, I think this 
so far, and from what I can remember, this series really, like, I think it still holds a lot of value for us today. Um, and it still kind of resembles our society today. Not that we have a game show where we kill children, but um, the way that the reaping is set up, when you're 12 and you start out, your name is entered once. When you're 13, your name is entered twice. And that goes on until you're 18 and your name is entered seven times. But um, if you're poor and starving, you can put in your name an extra time to receive a year's supply of grain and oil for one person. So like Katniss has put in her name four times when she was 12 and like she'll put in her name three extra times every year to provide grain and oil for her, her mother and her sister. And just the way that people of a lower socioeconomic background are like targeted by the system, like so clearly disadvantaged and their problems are just compounded by the system itself. Not so far from the way things are right now. Interesting. These books are so relevant to today and also to when they came out. This came out in 2008. Um, and I think it's like one of those series that it really resonated with people because of like the political side of it like a society that's not that different from ours in some cases so yeah interesting to think about i'm gonna keep reading i'm just i've just finished chapter one so i'm not even far in but i'm excited and i'm excited to meet Peta because i know it's i know it's happening soon Okay, hi. I didn't film at all yesterday because I didn't really read much, but today I've already read about 50 pages and it's only 10 a.m. Um, so I'm hoping to, I really want to finish this today. I think I can do it. I'm almost halfway through um, and it's obviously a really fast read. My copy is so battered because we've just had it forever. Um, but this holds up. I probably already said it, but it holds up. Like, it's so good. It's so fun. Like, everything's coming back to me now. Like, she just did the, um, the, I forgot about this originally, but she did the, like, private meeting with the game masters where she, like, shoots an apple out of a roast pig's mouth because they're not paying attention to her. Like, I love Katniss. Like, she is that girl. She's that girl. Like, oh, I don't know. And Peta, I'm just waiting for them to kind of, like, develop more of a friendship. Something I will say is that I don't think any romance is necessary in this. I don't know why Suzanne Collins chose to make there be a sort of love triangle, but Katniss, to me, doesn't seem interested in romance. And I stand by that. Like, not that I dislike Peta or I mean obviously I dislike Gail but that comes later um not that I dislike those characters but I'm just like mm, I feel like she would be better as friends you know um but that's kind of like not even really like it doesn't really affect my reading of this that much like this is so so good so i'm gonna update you guys when i finish this which is hopefully gonna be later today um hi so i'm almost i have a little bit less than 100 pages left i think yeah um like 70 pages left and i had to check in because this book made me cry um it's just so not like sobbing but like a couple tears just escaped um and it's just so, like, uh, obviously spoils for The Hunger Games. Like, I'm not going to do one that's not spoilers. And I would assume everyone's seen it. But, like, like, <laughs> when Rue died, I didn't cry. But they just had the part where there was, like, a banquet. And she goes to get Peta's medicine for his leg. And Thresh saves her life. Um, 
he's the other guy from Rue's district. And he's like, did you really save Rue? And she was like, yeah. And I buried her with flowers. And I, like, sang her to sleep. And, like, he, like, doesn't kill her out of things. Which is kind of, like, the bare minimum. But it's just, like, him being so protective over Rue. And Katniss being protective over Rue. I don't know. Something about it just, like, broke me for a minute. And, like... Um, it was, it was just really sweet. Um, oh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, good book. Good book. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna, tr <laughs> okay. Um, I'm gonna go finish it now. Um, okay, no, I haven't finished it yet. And yes, I keep crying, but you know, it's kind of just like once that dam has been broken, like sometimes you just can't go back. But this actually didn't make me cry, but it is really sad. And like, this is part of what I mean about the Hunger Games being really relevant. She's like thinking about if she actually wins the game and like her life after. I know I'll never marry, never risk bringing a child into the world, because if there's one thing being a victor doesn't guarantee, it's your children's safety. My kids' names would go right into the reaping balls with someone else's. And I swear, it, I'll never let that happen. Like, I don't know. There are lots of people today that don't want to have kids because they don't want to bring them into this world that we're living in. And the systems that, you know, um, oppress certain groups of people. Um... And that's completely valid. And here is this dystopian book that's supposed to be about, like, the worst government ever. And people in that world are feeling the same way that we are in this world. Scary stuff. Scary, scary stuff. But this book is so good. It's so good. Oh, okay, I have, like, 60 pages left. It's, it's only been 10 pages. Ah, uh, okay. Now I'm gonna finish it. I'm gonna finish it now. Wish me, wish me luck. Hello, um, it is a new day. I did finish The Hunger Games last night. I didn't film, um, after you guys last saw me crying and a mess because I was crying and a mess. Um, it was fantastic. The, like, okay, I kind of wanted to give it five stars because it felt like five stars, but at the same time, I just know that Catching Fire is gonna be better because it's my favorite. Um, but then again, I could be wrong because it's been a long time since I read the series, but I'm settling on a 4.75 for The Hunger Games. And if this isn't five stars, then maybe I'll rethink that and give the first one a five stars. But I'm, like, pretty sure this is going to be five stars because Catching Fire is just the best one. Like, I think that's not an unpopular opinion. Um, I'm so excited. I'm also going to watch the movie for the first one today. So I'll let you guys know my thoughts and feelings on that because I thought it'd be fun to watch all the films and then, like, tell you guys what I thought. I don't think I have many more thoughts about the ending of the hunger games and the ending of the first book kind of oh uh obviously as you saw but at the end of the first book like Peta, like the last couple pages Peta's like has our relationship all been a lie and like like kind of it was but like kind of she really cared about him and i'm not even thinking of it in like a romantic sense just like his feelings for her are so genuine and yeah they are romantic but he really like deeply cares about her and you can tell and just for him to think that she's been like super calculated the whole time which he has kind of been at some points it's it's a lot that's not true entirely what do you mean entirely what does that mean entirely that means it's 
part true. Oh my god. It's a lot to think about. Um, but yeah, so I am so excited for Catching Fire, and I'm really excited to see the film of this one as well. Like, I just feel like the games in this one are so sick. So I have to go to an urgent care, <laughs> um, because I have pink eye, if you couldn't tell. It's not, like, crazy right now, but yeah i couldn't get a doctor's appointment so i'm going to urgent care and i should be waiting a while so i brought this bad boy and i am so excited i will like update you guys when i have more to say about this one hi it's the next day and i made it about 100 pages into catching fire at the urgent care they gave me eye drops for my eye so that's good um and yeah i'm loving it obviously um this one is it starts out with Peta and katniss going on the victory tour after they win um the hunger games and katniss becomes aware that she really really messed with um like the capitals really annoyed at her like murderously angry at her because of her rebellion which is when she pulled out these poisonous berries and she and peter were gonna do a double suicide if the capital didn't let them win um and obviously they survived and that was fine but yeah so there's that um and president snow himself is making things bad and uprisings are happening and uh, the peacekeepers are murdering people and it's gruesome and it's a lot but I'm really liking it. I can't wait for them to find out they're going to be in the Hunger Games again. I mean, that's horrible for them, but it's like really entertaining for me. Um, yeah, really, really loving it so far. I mean, these books are just so good. They're just amazing. So yeah. Hi, I just wanted to give you guys an update because several things have happened. One, I watched the first Hunger Games film because I decided it'd be fun to rewatch them all after reading each one. And obviously, I don't think it's a surprise. I love it. Like, it's well beloved. I just haven't seen it in a long time. I think I only saw those films the once when I was watching them all. Um, there are some things that they changed. And um, the main one, I would say, is that at the end, there are these dogs that fight the um, remaining tributes. It's Katniss, Peeta, and... Kato, Kato, um, who is like their main rival and to drive them all together they have, um, the game makers have these like dogs come out. But in the book they're mutations is what they call them and they're actually, um, each of the dogs resembles one of the tributes that has passed, um, which is insane and Peter even thinks that they have the eyes of the tributes in them um so yeah i mean that's obviously horrifying and they took it out of the film which i think you know what like it kind of makes sense it's really like it's almost i guess it could be seen as overkill um to me i thought obviously you don't need that to know how evil the capital is but it's just a new level of kind of deranged and cruel um so I don't know, at first I was like disappointed that it wasn't in the film, but then I was like, does that make me a bad person? Like, am I just wanting to see this? Cause I have some weird desire to see just how fucked up things can get, but you know, whatever. Um, anyway, it's not in the film. And then also it does, Kato has a nice, nicer death in the book. He's literally being eaten inside the cornucopia work while Katniss and Peter are on top and they have to listen to it and I think that is good that they didn't have that in the film like that is a lot that's a lot so yeah um I do like think that the films are perfectly cast I love our main like little group of like Hamish and Effie and Katniss and Peter um love them and I just it made me made me feel all the things and I really liked it um so that is the first movie I'm gonna watch the second one very soon I think tomorrow anyway I am halfway through Catching Fire and so far 
it's amazing obviously like I just don't know how many ways I can say that this series is fantastic in this book Katniss is sort of trying to recover from her time spent in the game now she is dealing with incredible stress and she is um yeah she's terrified that her family's gonna die um because the capital doesn't like her and snow doesn't like her she gets engaged to Peta because she thinks it'll fix things and it doesn't do anything and president snow like tells her it's not good enough because she started this rebellion and now she is just found out that she is going to be in the quarter quell which is the um they do like crazier hunger games every 25 years and this is the 75th and for this year's twist they decided to put um two tributes from each district that are victors and obviously she's the only woman victor in district 12 because they only have her Peta, and haymitch and her and Peta are going back in i actually have forgotten what happens at the end of this honey you've got a big storm coming the games in this are crazy but i'm trying to figure out how so many people survive i feel like something happens to these games to like end them early or something because i was thinking about it and i was like i actually don't remember what happens and how are both katniss and Peta gonna live after this and i think some other people that are competitors in the games which i'm so excited to see Cynic. um i think they also live as well so i am completely drawing a blank for the end of this so that's going to be really fun to read and i hope i finish it before my family wants to watch it, it tomorrow katniss is one of my favorite like literary characters maybe of all time i think she's written with so much complexity and the trauma that she's been through um you can see it really get to her and she's complicated she has complicated emotions she has complicated feelings towards others um she's just very complex and layered and right now she's kind of sh she was kind of struggling to hope for some sort of um rebellion and now that hope has been taken from her and she had a really I think real response to finding out that she was gonna go back to the game which traumatized her so much um again yeah and um Peter continues to be amazing Gail I think is a really well written character um and his progression is going to begin I wouldn't say I'm looking forward to it but I would say I'm interested to kind of revisit it um because I think his character makes a lot of sense even if he's not always the most likable um yeah so that's my update i'll probably update you guys once i'm finished unless anything crazy happens or i start crying like i did like a baby okay i'll talk to you later hi um uh, i know the lighting's not great so i apologize but i am reading in bed and i am remembering why this is my favorite in the series. It's devastating. It's really sad. Um, oh my God, no, not crying again. Um, it's really sad. Um, the victors that are competing in this Hunger Games, like a lot of them know each other really well and they're friends and uh, oh my God. Why do I fall apart over this series so much? Um, and like Haymitch knows a lot of them really well because they all kind of have to like mentor the other people in the games. And um, they're all really angry and they're all kind of standing up. I mean, the ones that aren't like alcoholics or kind of morphine addicts there's a fair amount of them that turn to those things like Hamish did um to kind of cope with what they've been through but they're having um their interviews right now for before they go out to the games and um Katniss talks about how everyone's standing up for 
kind of the cr a special cruelty of this of these games um which essentially just make people relive the most traumatic time of their life like they obviously will never forget having been in the hunger games and now they have to go back and that is terrifying and they're all standing up for themselves in this in like small little ways in their interviews and they're all being really smart about it and Katniss and Peter are getting to know these characters and I wish I could remember how this goes I think I'm starting to kind of guess um something it's gonna have something to do with the forest field they're gonna end early I know that um because it's more than halfway through the book and we're not even at the games yet but um yeah it's just really really sad um and i'm so excited to see more character development <sighs> sorry um in like i'm excited to see katniss really get to know finnick um and joanna i don't think she gets to know joanna as much um but that's gonna be really good um I really like Joanna and Finnick. They're some of my favorite characters. Like, they're really good side characters. I mean, this series is just filled with, like, amazing, complex characters. It's just so good. And I'm getting really emotional. Ugh, I'm also a little tired. But, um, I'm probably gonna try to finish this book tonight. I have, like, 150 pages left. But I just don't want to do anything other than read this right now um oh my god and it's gonna get worse i just remember why i started filming is because i know i know what's gonna happen to Cinna. and um in the interview katniss just went out what they did was they put her in this wedding dress that she was gonna wear to her and Peta's wedding um and Cinna modified it um, President Snow told him to put Katniss in the wedding dress, and this is like Cinna's way of rebelling. Um, he made it so that when she holds up her arms and spins around, the dress burns away, and then she's in this kind of suit, or it's like a, another dress underneath, or like a jumpsuit that makes her look like a mockingjay, which is obviously the symbol for this revolution that she started. Um, And I know what's gonna happen to Cinna, and Cinna is also a really great character. And I'm so, oh my god, it's like, <sighs> like someone just needs to let Katniss have nice things. Like they will just not let her rest. Um. Okay. Um. <laughs> Wish me luck. I will update you guys later. Toodles. Um, it's, <laughs> it's literally been t like two pages, but see that? It's just so, he's so funny. Like, I love him. Um, no, he just, he just always kills it somehow in the interview. Like, in the first one, there's the whole iconic, like, Caesars asking him about, like, the girls from home. He's like, Surely a handsome guy like you has a girlfriend. And Peter's like, no, no, I don't. And then Caesar's like, oh, I bet everyone's gonna love you when you come back from the games. And he's like, that won't be possible, Caesar, because she's here with me. And it's such a crazy moment. And like, <laughs> this time he, he like outdoes himself. He's like, he tells everyone that they've gotten secretly married like in private and then he he says um he says i wish we had waited till this whole thing was done officially like the wedding and then caesar says surely even a brief time is better than no time <laughs> and then peter goes maybe i think that too caesar if it weren't for the baby oh <laughs> like that was like he really did that he does that every time like just lying just lying and making everything so tragic i feel like katniss is gonna be pissed though because she's not gonna want to be seen as pregnant like 
she knows it's like good for her for like sympathy purposes and getting sponsors but like at the same time she is gonna be like oh that makes me look weak i just love their little dy dynamic like he just never tells her these things that he's gonna say anyway little cuteness in all the misery i finished it this is stupid this is so stupid i stayed up until like three in the morning finishing this and i forgot that it ends on like the worst cliffhanger of all time and pita's with like in the capital i feel like this is happening to like my friend like yeah almost like that like i feel like this is happening right now and i need to keep reading to know he's gonna be okay but i i have to go to bed but um i yeah five stars um five stars for this one um oh i'll i'll talk to you guys in the morning <laughs> um yeah, this is a lot to take in. It's like too much to think about. Um, um <laughs> I'm like speechless. I, um, uh, yeah, Pete has been captured. I finally remembered what happened and how they all got out about 20 pages before it actually happened. Um, basically the, all of the other, well, the, the dish, the tributes from um, most of the other districts, not like one and two. And I think, I don't know, other ones um, teamed up to keep Katniss alive because she's the symbol of the revolution. And they kept PETA alive because they knew that they couldn't guarantee that she would, like, tr trust them or stick with them if anything happened to PETA. Um, and they, like, gear up this. So the, um, the arena is, like, a clock and different things happen at different times in this clock. And, um you know at one point the clock strikes lightning and they katniss shoots a, she she blows up the force field around the games i'm gonna explain this tomorrow i'm gonna explain it tomorrow because there's too much like there's so much um going on with me right now um i'll talk to you guys tomorrow <laughs> i'll talk to you tomorrow um bye bye okay it is actually a couple days later because i i had to <laughs> i had to take up a, a little breather um after catching fire it, it was so good it was so good um there's a reason this is my favorite there's a lot of reasons it's my favorite. Um, we get a lot of new characters that I really love and are really beloved kind of over time. I also think the quarter quell is really interesting. And this is the novel where um, it's not as much like this in the movies. Like in the first, okay, in the first movie, there's actually um, Katniss has a bit of a sense that what she's doing um, has kind of incited a bit of rebellion. Um, or at least we, the audience, know that. But in the books, she doesn't really figure that stuff out until Catching Fire or she doesn't know at all the extent of it. So much happens in this book and it's so short. The editing in this series is immaculate, like so good. You can just tell like there's no space wasted. There's no ascendance that doesn't have meaning to the story and like 
oh, so much stuff happens, so much stuff happens. And it makes me so emotional. And like, this is why I read. I was, I felt that feeling when I was reading this. Like, this is why I read. Cause my emotions would, oh my God, tearing up again. Um, On the space of like two pages, I would go from crying to laughing to crying to shocked like i felt so so much reading this book um and the ending oh my god i don't know i don't know what i would have done if i read this when it came out and i had to wait like i don't think i ever had to wait for mockingjay i think they were all out um but that ending is crazy. It's crazy. Um, obviously Katniss finds out that the reason other tributes were dying for Peta and her were because they're important figures in the revolution or actually because she's an important figure in the revolution and they know that she wouldn't really go along with people if they didn't work to save Peta. Um, and she and the other other troops get out of the arena and Peta is captured by the capital along with joanna i think i blocked that from my memory like that's so sad it's all coming back to me now yeah he's captured he's in the capital and so is joanna and i'm not okay the last line of this book is so iconic so iconic he kind of alludes to getting um prim and katniss's mother out on time and she was like what do you mean out on time what's up with district 12 and he goes Katniss there is no district 12 chills chills five stars five stars um no notes five stars um but yeah I have just wow um I watched the movie obviously and it was amazing. I think a lot of people know, like it's no surprise, the movies and the books are great. Um, I think that the movies are perfectly cast, like perfectly cast. Um, when I read the book, I picture the actors and actresses like in the roles. I think Jennifer Lawrence is perfect in this role for Katniss. Um, Peta, perfect, like everything, perfect casting, perfect. Um, the one thing I wanted to see in the movie that we didn't see um, is when there are these two women that Katniss run, like comes across in the woods of District 12 um, before she goes back to the games. And um, they're, they've run away from, I think the capital, maybe another district. I can't remember, but they've ran away from somewhere and they're trying not to get caught and they're looking for District 13. And there's a whole backstory and explanation to District 13 and why like it was kind of a race. And there's this whole thing where they noticed that like the Capitol has been using the same footage from District 13 for years. Um, and so District 13 is kind of suggested in the book as a place, maybe that a rebellion it could be like a base for the rebellion, but in the movie, it's not really explained. And then at the end, they're just like, we're going to District 13. Um, so I kind of wish that that had happened because also like Katniss, she like teaches one of the girls how to hunt. Um, she kind of teaches them to live in the wild. And I don't know, I just love Katniss. Like she's so like oh I don't care about people but then she like teaches people like the skills for survival that she hasn't even met and she like I think I remembered her as a lot more reluctant to um be the leader for this rebellion than she actually is I think in Mockingjay she is quite hesitant to actually become this figurehead even though she's already the figurehead like she has to like do promotional videos and stuff like that if I am remembering correctly um but in this book, like, she is excited about the idea of rebellion. She is wanting to rebel. She's knowing, like, 
she I don't think had ever really thought about it before the games um like Gail was always the one who had those thoughts and she was just like I'm just gonna focus on what's in front of me like there are people I love people I care about and those are what's important and in this book you see her kind of warming to the idea of rebellion because she knows how unjust everything is and she is very personally affected by it and she can see everyone else around her is as well and now it is on to Mockingjay I think this is the one that I remember the least about um I remember vaguely how everything ends I remember little bits of like she has to do these promo videos and she's like I have a message for President Snow and all that stuff um and I remember the parachutes I who could forget the parachutes um, and Gail's downfall and Prim's death. Um, so I guess I remember a bit of it. But one thing I don't remember is whether or not Sin is alive. And I kind of feel like he's not alive. But I, I have a little bit of hope that he could be. But like, I really don't think he is. Anyway, I'm excited to see more Finnick. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just really excited to read this. And then on to the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes after this, which I'm very interested in. I'll update you guys when I've read a bit of Mockingjay. Okay, so obviously it's a bit later now. I actually just started reading Mockingjay and already it's a lot. Um, the book opens on cat. Katniss standing in the ruins of District 12. Um, why do I sob every time I talk about these books? Jesus Christ. One of the things that Suzanne Collins does really, really well is depicting, I think, an accurate portrayal of where a person who's been through everything Katniss has been through would be kind of mentally. Also, it's insane that Katniss is 17 in this. It's insane. She is beginning this book at I would say rock bottom um I mean yes she's helping with the resistance so there is that um also I'm sorry about the sound of my heater if you can hear it um so she has that but she's not hopeful she blames herself for the genocide of her district which I think about she said 80 or 90 percent died um she's standing in the ruins and she's looking at these skeletons and she's going she's going i killed you i think as a as a pacifier and you and you and she hates herself she's just mentally destroyed um by the things that have happened and i that makes so much sense and it's so difficult. And this is, like we're starting off in such a dark place. Oh my God. As she's walking through, she says, ashes billow up around me and I pull the hem of my shirt up over my mouth. It's not wondering what I breathe in, but who that threatens to choke me. That is so fucked up. That's so fucked up. And after she shot the arrow through the um force field around the games it took 15 minutes for these bombers to come in and decimate district 12 her whole district and it wasn't even her idea in the first place to do that not that it's not her fault like it is her fault but it's also i don't know how anyone could bear the weight of that anyway there's a lot happening and I'm on page eight so I am prepared for lots more tears um because it seems like that is the way that this is gonna go for me <laughs> wish me luck okay I'm about a third of the way in now and so much has happened um so Cinna this part just killed me when Cinna it turned out had like made her Mockingjay outfit for the revolution even though he's dead, he was like thinking ahead and she can have like a piece of him with her. 
I just, it really got me. That one really got me. I just love Sina and it's so, so sad that he's dead. He was such a good character. Like you could tell he was always like, he didn't like what the capital was doing, but he didn't, he didn't speak out about it, but you could always tell that that was how he felt kind of. And I just miss him. Oh my God. And then the other thing is now that she's working with the rebels from district 13, um, she has to work with President Coyne and like it's a whole new force that's kind of like trying to control her. So she says, another force to contend with, another power player who has decided to use me as a piece in her games. Oh, this things never seem to go according to plan. Um, and then she goes like, first there were the game makers, then there were President Snow, um, then the rebels um, ensnaring me and the metal claw that lifted me from the arena, designating me to be their Mockingjay and then having to recover from the shock that I might not want the wings. And now Quine, with her fistful of precious nukes and a well-oiled machine of a district, finding it's even harder to groom a Mockingjay than to catch one. Um, she has been the quickest to determine that I have an agenda of my own and am therefore not to be trusted. She has been the first to publicly brand me as a threat. So she's kind of facing the <laughs> the big, like the boss of all of the, um, the people that are trying to control her. Like, Coin is different. She's clever and she and Katniss have some of the same goals, but at the same time, I feel like Coin will go. Coin, I don't know. It's slightly different. I want to know more about Coin because I can't remember much about her. Um, yeah, but I just like imagine being Katniss and being controlled by so many different people over such a short span of time. Like she's 17 and like someone just let this girl do her own thing. Oh my God. And then there's this part where Suzanne Collins is like critiquing our society. Listen to this. So she says, okay. So they were talking about how if the rebels win the war, they'll make their own Republic and like everyone will have a say. And they were like, it's worked before, like for other people in the past. And then Hamish goes in his in his books, and then his, Blue Jack says in history books. And if our ancestors can do it, then we can too. And then Katniss is like thinking, like, frankly, our ancestors don't seem much to brag about. I mean, look at the state they left us in with the wars and the broken clan planet. Clearly, they didn't care about what would happen to the people that came after them. Like true, so true. We are those ancestors in the book um the political commentary is so good it's so good let's see what else do i have i like folded over pages so i could tell you guys about stuff oh my god and then gail is just so he's starting to get so annoying like i see where he's coming from and i would actually argue he's a really good character like you see his progression really well um but he I don't know he's seeming to side with coin on a lot of things and then they go to district 12 to film one of those pro bros they're in like katniss's old house in victor village he goes like remember this is where you kissed me because she kissed him when she thought he was like passed out and then she goes i didn't think you'd remember that and then he's like i'd have to be dead to forget maybe not even then and then he's like, maybe I'll be that like that man in a hanging tree song, still waiting for an answer. And then she kisses him and then he goes, I knew you'd kiss me. And then she says, how? Um, and he says, because I'm in pain. That's the only way I get your attention. Don't worry, Katniss, it'll pass. the shade he is not wrong though but i would argue it's still because she doesn't want anything romantic with him but she knows that if he's in pain it'll like make him feel better like she's really just trying to like make him have a bit happier i don't know i don't know but that was a little bit pick me up gail but he's true he is right he's right i'm just like the romance it doesn't have to be in there I get it for the sake of the plot, but like it doesn't have to be in there, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying Mockingjay. It's so different from the other books, but I do 
really like it. So yeah, I'll update you guys in a bit. Hi, sorry if there's noise from my heaters I have going. Um, but wanted to update you guys on Walking Jay, even though I'm not that much farther into it now. It's just very making me feel lots of things. One thing I really love about this book is that we get to see Finnick and Katniss like really bond. It's it's really sad because they're both like extremely traumatized and really struggling to cope but like Finnick what he does when he is anxious or just kind of trying not to think which is kind of all the time um is he ties and unties knots in this like bit of rope and then he like gives his rope to Katniss um because she's having a really hard time with like Peta being away and all this stuff um and that's just so sweet I mean obviously he just has to go without it till like morning when he can ask for a new one but yeah I just love Finnick with like my whole heart and then another thing that I feel so like silly for not realizing um but I was watching okay I was watching the book Leo's book the other day the one about um she like tier ranks dystopian societies like how realistic they are in books and when she's talking about the hunger games she brings up how the like the way that the capital uses the districts for all of their like resources and stuff um but like exploits them and really abuses them is like the way that the west kind of like abuses the global south and like why did I not why did I not draw the little line connecting that but that makes so much sense um ugh. Susan Collins really did something here like she really she knew what she was doing I just feel a little bit silly for not having noticed that before but like there's so much that Suzanne Collins is saying in these books and it's just brilliant. It's so good. That's why I think that they're so good to read at any age in your life. Like they're good for, I mean, I, like this is young adult, but like, should it really be young adult? I feel like it should be um, maybe classed as adult, but that's just me, even though it is happening to kids. I think that this has messages for and things for a vast variety of readers and a vast variety of ages of readers like I don't think you could ever be too old to like read this and enjoy it you know what I'm saying it feels very adult okay and then another thing I noticed was the the little tiny bit we get about snow and his backstory in this um i only like really picked up on or noticed it because obviously i saw ballad of song birth and snake fennec is exposing all these secrets that he's learned while he was being prostituted out by the capital which also can i just say that's so fucked up that's so fucked up that's <sighs> how could they do that to my fennec and just like beyond words like that's horrible um to force someone into prostitution like Anyway, he's saying that the way that Snow rose to power was through poisoning everyone. And I was just like, ooh, there it is. There's the little seed that she took and grew into Ballad. Um, or maybe like one of them. Cause I, I feel like we, we didn't know much about Snow at all in these books. Except for that, I guess, which I completely forgot about. I've forgotten a lot. <laughs> um, before I reread this, obviously. Oh my god. Okay, and then the thing that just happened. I was literally on the page before when I sort of remembered something. Okay, so right, so <sighs> District 13 finally sent people to go um, try to rescue Peta and Annie and Joanna um, because they're seeing that Katniss is, she's unable to cope because she's seeing how horrible PETA is looking in these videos, like the interviews that they're doing and how they are 
he like warns district 13 about this bombing that's coming and then she just sees his blood like spatter on these tiles before the footage cuts out and they're like she is not okay so they rescue Peta for her and just the page before he and Katniss are reunited I had a little moment where I remembered something along the lines of that he actually doesn't remember her and I was right I was right she knows how to end a chapter to get you to keep reading Suzanne does because so Katniss is like okay we've been missing Peta this whole book we've been so sad right and like we've been really wanting them to see each other again and this is the end of the oh my god so she's they see each other um his hands are reaching for me to caress my face i think my lips are just forming his name with his fingers lock around my throat oh my god like how does she it's devastating devastating um so they're saying that he's been hijacked which i can't remember what that means precisely i and foggy on that so i will just be learning along with katniss oh but it's just so sad it's so sad like even though i don't think that a romance between katniss and Peta is necessary i do think that their friendship is one of the highlights one of the many highlights of this series but i think he's the most like genuine friend she has i mean gail is gail's a different story he's he thinks he knows what's best but Peta is different um and to just like be missing that person that you've been through all this trauma with and that really knows you and you know wants to protect you and loves you and to finally be reunited with that person who's been tortured because of you in their absence and for them not not to remember you or just not to be themselves like that's this girl has been through enough like stop putting her through this stuff this is it's too much now it's like oh my god and then what's gonna happen to prim oh my god prim's death like she is this cannot get uh, she cannot catch a break. That feels like a gross understatement. Like she's, oh. I've been kind of putting off reading this because I know the struggle, <laughs> like the pain that is coming. Wish me, wish me luck. Hi, um, it has been a couple days. It's taken me forever to finish this book, but I, my defense have been very busy because i had to do a final um well so it's pretty late at night and i am reading mocking jay hoping to finish it tonight and uh, so i just started the third part it's split into three parts this one we call the assassin and so now they're in the capital preparing to like fight katniss's plan is to separate from the group um get this she wants to get this bracelet it's called a hollow because it can produce holograms wow um from this guy boggs who is like her bodyguard there um and she wants to take that because it has like a whole map of the capital and find President Snow and kill him and then die. She wants to die in the battle, which is already um, like Katniss, Han, I know you've been through a lot, but that's not the answer. Like that would be so sad. The different streets in the capital are filled with these pods that basically are like booby traps um and it really reminds katniss of like being in the arena um so that's already a little bit traumatic for our girl um and then Peta is sent 
in with the other like with her little squad so she's in this squad with like gail finnick Peta, and a couple randos very convenient how that happened but i think it also is explained by like they're the star squad so they're filming propose for dish 13 like as they're fighting in battle um so Peta's there and he's like doing a bit better but he's not sure if he like hates katniss or what she is to him basically the hijacking thing means that the capital took uh, it's so fucked up oh my god so they took happy memories of his like his happy me memories with katniss specifically took them injected tracker jacker tracker jacker tracker jacker yeah tracker jacker venom into him so that he would like just enough to make him a bit fearful and so they changed all his memories of katniss and she thinks like he thinks she wants to kill him and that like she's evil and all this stuff which is so sad so sad um but he decided to train and like come to war with them so everyone's like a little bit concerned that he's gonna try to kill katniss um but anyway he's there i don't that was not necessary but one day they are going to shoot this propo in a part of the city that actually has these pods in it when like before they have been doing like nothing and they were all getting really frustrated by it and um they're shooting it and whatever and they were supposed to know about all the pods on the street that's why they thought it was fine to film and boggs her bodyguard Like, they're all having such a nice little peaceful moment. They're just laughing about someone's, like, bad acting skills. And he steps back and sets off, like, a landmine. And dies. And dies. Like, it's just so sad because he was, like, a small character that became, like, really sweet. He was, like, the only one in District 13 that like the only person she met there that she felt like she could really trust he reminded her of her dad and so she felt like she had like a father figure like he was so he was like looking out for her all the time ah and now he's gone but before he left he um he transferred like control of his hollow to him which has to be like voice activated so like she was planning to steal it from him and like betray him and run away um and he transferred it to her and then he just said don't trust them don't go back kill Peta. do what you came to do and then dies and then dies like mm. first of all it's so sad that she finds this for 13 and then she can't trust people in it and that like they don't have her best interest at heart because after all that she's been through a girl deserved a break um and to be part of like a society that really like cared about her and just basically wasn't out to kill her and like you know you know coin is like bad news like she wants she does not like katniss um but just like for him to say like don't go back like her mom and sister are there like she's gonna go back he knows that um and then to kill Peta, what do you mean what do you mean because he might kill her like she could not she could not kill Peta. although she did say in the last chapter she basically said that she would shoot him because he's not even Peta anymore like if he tried to attack her she would just shoot him um she puts up a good front okay katniss really pretends like she doesn't care um but yeah anyway with Peta, they're trying to like rebuild his memories um and so he asks he tells them things he sort of remembers and then they tell him if it's like true or false basically and then they'll explain like the truth if it's if what he doesn't remember if what he remembers isn't the truth and it's just like <sighs> i just want my boy back like will he ever be the same i don't know i can't remember i don't think he is 
but it's so sad. Like, this book is gonna fuck me up. I can feel- I'm already- <sighs> This whole series has, like, destroyed me. Like, I am crying more than I've cried probably in my whole life. Well, I mean, in this amount of time. I've definitely cried a lot in life. Anyway, um, I'm gonna finish this book. Hopefully, I won't be checking back up with you until I finish it. But I know... I know what's coming. And I, I feel like I probably will check in, but... Um... Oh my god. I just need to calm down. Um, anyway, I'm gonna go read. Um... Um, Finnick just died. Um. He just died. Um. Oh my god, I'm not okay. I'm not okay. to like he got through so much so much and he got he and Annie got married he and Annie got married um and it was not supposed to go this way for him like he was supposed to he was supposed to make it he's a good bum That's so sad. I. <sighs> um. Yeah, anyway. Um, Fennec is dead, so. Um, yeah, yep, um, I'm gonna keep reading. <sighs> okay. Hi, so this next clip I actually had issues with, so I'm having to refilm it, um, but I, I rewatched it, so I know what I'm talking about, okay? Doesn't really matter to you that I'm refilming this, but if it looks like I'm back in the UK, it's because I am at this point. So anyway, Mockingjay, final thoughts. Um, I have a lot to say about this. First off, the last 100 pages of this series is crazy, crazy. So much stuff happens. First, we get almost all of Katniss's like crew in the war dying. Then the parachute bombing. Um, Katniss suffers horrible burns and scarring and goes under major reconstructive surgery. Um, then she kills Coin instead of Snow at the public execution, is put into solitary confinement for months, and then is sent to District 12 where she sits in a chair in her kitchen, um, and doesn't get up except to go to the bathroom. I swear, she doesn't, she doesn't change clothes. She doesn't shower. Um, and all that happens is she sits there and then she eats because Greasy Say comes over and makes her food, which is also really sweet. Um, but yeah, so she just sits there for months and then finally one day she gets outside again and goes hunting. And then Peta comes back and her and Peta get back together and there's this horrible, horrible epilogue, <laughs> which is like the bane of my existence. She and Peta are both traumatized beyond belief by what they've been through i mean not believe, not beyond be belief <laughs> what am i saying obviously not beyond belief because it's really really realistic um she wakes up screaming like f for years for the rest of her life um Peta has constant like panic attacks i think 
I don't have the books with me anymore, but I think he definitely is not doing great. Um, and they come back together and they fall in love and she is like sexually attracted to him and all of that. Um, and in this epilogue, they have kids, which is just, I feel like this epilogue was unnecessary. It felt like, you know, those like shitty epilogues in romance novels where it's like so unnecessary to the plot, but then they like, it just shows them getting married or like having a baby. I hate those. And this was the same energy as that. Um, I just didn't really feel like it was needed, but it did give us a very iconic last line when she talks about like the games she plays with her kids. And she's like, but there are worse games to play iconic like that was great that was great um but if i had my own copy of the book i would simply rip out the page with the epilogue i hate it i hate it um she and Peter have kids after he begs her for 15 years which look i'm not someone who wants kids so maybe this is like me projecting a little bit but i simply i don't know my feelings about this are complicated like me personally, I would not have written that epilogue. Maybe the publishers asked her to or something. I don't know. Um, and I wouldn't have made a Katniss have, have kids. Um, but I just, I know that she didn't want to have kids because of the world that she lived in. And that was like the main reason. Um, but I just still think Peta like begging her for years and then she finally says yes doesn't suggest that she was like enthusiastic about having kids like maybe it just took her that long to kind of feel like things are normal in her world and then she was like you know what like this could be an okay place to raise kids maybe that's it but i just still hated it i was like that was just unnecessary i have some like random thoughts i love that paler is the new president at the end um i stand that woman she's not in the books like a lot like you don't see much of her but when you do see her she's just always slaying and so i feel like she'll be a really good president for Penem. more thoughts about katniss pita and gail um i heard someone say that the publisher wanted for there to be a romance and that suzanne didn't um don't quote me on that because when i looked it up i couldn't find anything except for like speculation because apparently suzanne collins doesn't do lots of interviews so really could be anything um what i really liked in mockingjay was getting to see gail's character progression i think gail is a really good character i mean do i like him not that much but um he's a really really well written character um i think it's really interesting how he and Peta are like they're very similar in a lot of ways but it's in this book that you see the difference between them and it's a very important difference, which is like what they're willing to do to win the war or what they're willing to do to their enemies. Um, Katniss thinks that there's somewhere we, where we should draw the line. Um, she doesn't want to stoop to their level. Um, she doesn't want to be unnecessarily cruel and violent. Whereas Gail is like, they go low, I go lower. When they go low, I go lower. It's a big difference. It's an important difference. And it's why in the end she chooses Peta. Her and Gail are too similar. I believe she does have a deep friendship with Peta. And she also recognizes that her and Gail are way too similar. She needs Peta to, you know, remind her to be like a little light in her life. Like he's like so puppy dog. And being with Gail, it's too easy for them to be like, doom and gloom all the time and with Peta, he like gives her hope for a better future so that's really sweet I also think that Katniss just has more empathy than Gail does and a bit of a more nuanced understanding of how people are in the capital because she has firsthand experience with those people for instance um when her prep team is found in district 13 and they were like imprisoned and stuff I was so sad I love them um Gail was like, why do you feel bad for them? They're from the capital. And what, they like couldn't dye their hair? And she's like, but it's because I understand them. Like they 
were actually genuinely devastated to see me going to the second Hunger Games. Like, they've been raised to be this way. It's not their fault. Um, and Gail doesn't really understand that. So, yeah, big differences between Katniss and Gail, but I thought that it was really interesting to reread and see how Gail progresses. One thing I found a bit annoying was just the way that the end of the book handled how Katniss and Peeta get together. Like, it all makes sense. I get it. Um, I think the romance makes a bit more sense in the movies, but, you know, if there has to be a romance in the books, that's fine. I'm, I'm like, glad that it ended the way it did. But what I think is funny is that on the last page of the book, there is one paragraph where she gets back with Peeta. And then, and then the book just ends. And I'm like, dang, it, it like felt like an afterthought. Um, so I don't know, but I also wasn't like, I'm not the biggest fan of the romance. So I didn't really need there to be more. I just thought that, that was funny. I think that some people don't really like Mockingjay as much as the other books. And I think that's probably because there was no Hunger Games in it. Like it is pretty different from the other books but I felt like it was a really great example on how to end a series really well. Um, everything was tied up, not perfectly, but it didn't leave you asking um, any questions. And what I mean by not perfectly is like, it didn't feel too, OMG, everyone has a happy ending. Like it felt realistic and the characters were obviously like very traumatized by what they went through. There were lots of people that they lost that were close to them in the final action. Like it felt, it felt real and I really appreciate an ending that feels authentic. Anyway, the other thing that I talked about in this clip was I had started a Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I was at the point where I was at, I was about 35, 37 pages in. Um, but I already had lots of thoughts and at the beginning of this book, I was eating that shit up. I was obsessed. I really liked it. Um, I felt like it was a really clever beginning. I don't know about clever, but like Coriolanus was really clever. And I think the way that she wrote him like implied how smart he was and calculated. I'll talk about that in a sec. So the book starts with a long epigraph. I think that's what it's called. All the quotes at the beginning of a book. These kind of lay out the different um theories of like the different political theories that um Suzanne is exploring in this book um I actually had the Barnes and Noble exclusive edition which includes an interview at the end in which she talked about a lot of those so I'll talk more about that at the end of this video when I'll have finished the book even though I finished it now because this is fake this right now is fake it's me refilming so i already know all that um but yeah so those gave me a lot for of food those quotes gave me a lot of food for thought there was a lot going on um before even page one and i got the impression from the quotes that suzanne was trying to be like um Coriolanus was not born this way. He was made to be who we see as President Snow. Um, but in reality, the conversation she was having in these quotes was a lot more nuanced than that. Um, I was just a little bit too small brain to realize. One thing that I thought was really great about the beginning was how it explains the condition that we see the... Um, world of Panem in by the time we get to Katniss's story. So we start out with Coriolanus, who is part, shut up, sorry. He's a member of this family that's very prestigious in the capital. Um, however, they've lost most of their fortune and are basically close to starving all the time. They're like on the verge of having to sell their house. Really not great, but he's pretending to everyone like he's still rich and Basically what happens with the Snow's money is that they invested a lot of money into District 13 before the war, which is obviously where all the nukes and stuff were made. But during the war, the 13, District 13 was part of the rebellion and the capital actually bombed 13. 
entirely it was wiped out except for as we know from reading the other books they still existed like underground um and with that the snows lost all their money um and then during the war Coriolanus lost his parents um Tigris his cousin also lost her family and I think their grandmother lost her husband so now it's just the three of them living together in this like penthouse that is like really old um and they're just kind of holding on to that um one thing I really liked about the book as opposed to the movie was the way that we can clearly see that Coriolanus hates Sejanus from the very beginning um Sejanus represents this whole new class of people in the capital their new money um and Sejanus is from district two which is the only district that ended up siding with the capital in this big war that happened that explains why um the careers are so like well-bred for the hunger games and why a lot of them come from two in the hunger game series um and that is like the new home of munitions following district 13's collapse and so janice's dad is he like owns a munitions empire and so his family moved to the capital and they get all this like they're really really rich and so janice is like these people are going to replace me and my family and they don't deserve it he sees everyone in the districts as scum and like subhuman and basically thinks sejanus is too um and he's intensely jealous of sejanus while also thinking that he's beneath him in the film however i i don't know the first interaction between sejanus and Coriolanus, i wasn't really sure if they were friends or not and then after that it just seemed like they were besties and i was like oh okay i guess they're besties reading this book they're not they're not Corio hates Sejanus so much um so yeah I wish the film had been a bit more clear about that uh, there's lots of issues with the film I'll talk about it later another thing I found interesting about Coriolanus is like the kind of hypocrisy I don't know if that's the right word but basically during the war and following the war he and his family have been starving like he knows what starvation feels like but when he sees people in the district starving, he has no sympathy because he's like, they're literally like dogs to him. No worse than dogs. They're like, they're like bugs where he's like, oh, we can just like kill them. And, you know, they're, we just have to control them and all this stuff. Um, so he has no sympathy for them. It's also established pretty quick, quickly that Corio is a very cunning, kind of quick, calculated thinker even from a very young age he obviously had to grow up pretty quickly um because you know he was very young during the war and then since then he's had to um kind of continue to prove himself in society but at the age of eight when Sejanus joins his school um the other kids are like making fun of Sejanus because they're like oh you're district scum and blah 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 and Corey was about to join in and then he like thinks better of it and is like I'm just gonna ignore him because doing that makes the um the capital kids think that he is like <laughs> makes the capital kids think that he's like mature or like establishes him as kind of being like above it as opposed to them and makes Sejanus think that he is like nice and a sympathetic person however it's said in the book that like neither of these parties really know his true intentions so like behind acting this way and neither do we really I mean actually we do because it's to make himself look good but yeah to think that way when you're eight years old is abnormal to say the least um so yeah that's the kind of guy Corio is we also learn very quickly that he is prone to obsession he's very aware of this fact um he also is constantly trying to establish control in social situations and um manipulate things to serve him he also i particularly hated 
well I hated him from the beginning because I knew who he was but also just like I don't know I feel like in the beginning of the film he seems like oh you know he's sort of like likable I guess he's charming and whatnot um but no in the book he's just really not likable ever he's he's sexist he's like he wants a guy to mentor in the Hunger Games because he's like oh they have a good chance of winning like girls are just weak and fragile and I'm like shut up shut up okay a couple random thoughts to finish up this clip firstly apparently the people in the capital resorted to cannibalism during the war because there was a siege and they were running out of food um yeah no one in district 12 is ever a cannibal at least as far as we know even though they're always on the brink of starvation so it's a little bit funny to me that choreo thinks the people in the capital are so um much more evolved than the people in the districts yeah um also suzanne loves her little songs and lucy gray's song um when she's at the reaping is fucking brilliant um it's such a bop it's so good i was like singing it in my head when i read it and then after i filmed this clip i actually went and watched the video on youtube because i was like she just she really slayed that sorry if you can hear my chair creaking it's a very creepy chair um but anyway those were the thoughts i had originally included in this little update um back to your regularly scheduled vlog hello so i am almost halfway through the ballad of songbirds and snakes and i'm liking it i don't like it nearly as much as i like the hunger games series um but it is good i just i'm not getting that same feeling that i got reading the hunger games like i'm enjoying it but i'm just a little bit I don't know it's it's a little bit it's slower paced um which i think is part of it and i don't know i'm finding it interesting but it's just there's it doesn't have the same feeling but it's not a bad book like i do like it and there's nothing like wrong with it it's just not the same and i think it's because i was on such a high reading those books and now i'm like eh, it's fine it's pretty good um but there are some things I found interesting that I wanted to talk about. First off, this is just funny to me. Like, Coriolanus, I can't, like, it's so funny that he likes a girl like Lucy Gray. Like, she's just, she literally says at one point, polka dots always make me feel happy. Like, that's the girl that Corio likes. That's so funny. That's so funny. Like, he just likes someone that's so the opposite of him she's so like sunshine shiny and like rainbows and i mean not all the time um but yeah i think what's interesting about them as well is so in the movie i didn't i felt i found it very insta love and in this I mean, it's interesting because she starts out like flirting with him. He has empathy for her and he like realizes that she's a real human being, which is more than I could say for him at the beginning. Um, I still don't think he really sees the other tributes as humans. So there is that. I think it's just because he likes her. Um, but I don't know. Jury's still out on whether they're kind of insta lovey in the book. They're like... I don't know I think he he opens up to her because she seems just really sweet and I think he opens up to her a little bit because he knows she's gonna die so I think that's part of it um and then what else we've got oh also just the level of self-delusion in this man one of the tributes in the cage at the zoo kills this girl um Arachne and he like excuse me he in his mind he's like oh i need to make a like make myself look good so he goes over and like tries to save her and that's literally what he thinks he doesn't like do it because he like cares about her he finds her really annoying um and then like there's this footage of him doing that being shown all over and then it says he was particularly pleased to catch a shot of livia cardu flailing her way through the crowd at the sound of the gunfire in rhetoric class she'd once attributed his inability to 
to decipher the deeper meaning of a poem to the fact that he was too self-absorbed. The irony coming from Livia of all people. But action spoke louder than words. Coriolanus to the rescue, Livia to the nearest exit. The irony though of him being like he's so self-absorbed that's the only reason why he helped her was to like help his image like he's just deluded deluded and also what's really fucked up is that like after the arena is bombed they like a lot of the like, i think several tributes die and so do several of the mentors and Coriolanus is in the hospital because he got trapped under that beam that was like burning and all they do for the tributes is they send a vet to help them and they won't let them in the hospital a vet because they think they're animals <sighs> that's crazy it's crazy anyway yeah i'm liking it i'm not in love with it but it's pretty good mm, it's pretty good but the more i'm reading it the more i'm realizing like, I kind of felt this before I read this, but, like, the movie did not really do it for me. Uh, I think it needed some sort of inner monologue or something. I'll probably talk more about that at the end once I finish this, how I feel like it compared to the film. All right, I'll update you guys either when I'm done or if something really interesting happens. Hi, so I've officially finished Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, and I wanted to wrap up this vlog, so I have several thoughts. Um, first off, I did watch the Mockingjay film. No notes. Brilliant. Amazing. As always, like, all of the films were so good. I watched both of them. I don't know if I said that I watched the first one, but they were both amazing. I mean, those films, they're just a really, really great adaptation. Um, the little changes that they do make, for instance, like, Effie and Hamish's relationship, I really enjoy. As far as the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes film, when I saw it, I hadn't read the book yet, obviously, and at first I thought, yeah, it was just okay. When I went to see it, I was like, mm, you know, it's not great like the other films are in the franchise, um, but it's all right. I would say I found me and my friends, so it's not just me, found um the bit at the end a little bit confusing like there's this scene that's like the best scene in the film when Coriolanus is kind of going insane um out in the forest and he's trying to kill Lucy Gray or he thinks that Lucy Gray is gonna kill him um but me and my friends were sort of like in the theater being like do we know do you know how we got here um I think the film could have really benefited from some internal narration from Coriolanus obviously done in a way that wouldn't have been cheesy but that would have given us um, a lot of insight into his character that we really lacked um, and made things make a lot more sense um, and also established that he's just not a good guy from the very beginning. So lots of changes were made in the film. For one thing, the whole um, mentoring a student thing is a surprise to Coriolanus in the film, whereas in the book, um, he's just sort of like, he knows that this is like his last assignment. Um, I kind of actually liked that change in the film because I felt like it added to this sense of like him feeling betrayed. Like he feels really entitled to this prize, um, which is also not the plinth prize in the book. Um, I will talk about that in a second. Um, he feels entitled to it because he's the top student in the class. So it makes him feel betrayed when he finds out he also has to mentor someone in the Hunger Games. Um, so I did like that change in the film. Also, what with it being the plinth prize in the film, I would have liked it if they had done it better. Um, like I've mentioned before, you don't get the sense, at least I didn't, that uh, Corio hates Sejanus in the film. This would have been great if the film had established that and the way that Coriolanus feels really threatened by the plinths. And it would be, for the Coriolanus in the book, it would be really like, he would hate having to get his money from the plants to go to university. Actually, no, because in the book, the prize comes later. Okay, so in the book, um, the plants actually do give a prize. I want to revise what I just said. So in the book, the 
plinths actually do put together a prize that would um cover tuition for the person whose student wins the games just like the plinth prize does in the film however that prize is only created after um Corey Lance has to rescue Sejanus from being in the arena um as Sejanus's father kind of like covering things up and apologizing um so yeah I guess they just kind of eliminated that aspect of it and went straight to straight to it being the Plinth Prize in the book I mean in the movie the other thing is that the games ended at different times in the book and the film in the film um they end when the snakes are released and the snakes kill everyone except for Lucy Gray in the book they kill most of the other people but there are still a few left that Lucy Gray kills um through poison or whatnot and then she wins so it's like she does a little bit more work which I was just like I found that interesting when I was reading it because I didn't know what to expect um but I didn't like mind that it wasn't that way as much in the film I don't know I feel like very like ambivalent about that I thought the acting in the film was really good um but I don't know yeah I thought parts were confusing I felt like some of my favorite aspects of the book would have been great to see in the film um for instance in the book I really really liked the explanation as to why Coriolanus hates Mockingjay so much basically um since the Mockingjay is born of the capital engineer Jabberjay and the like natural mockingbird um it is a representation of something that the capital can't control and kind of a perversion or corruption of this like capital made creature um they're impossible to control um he can't eliminate them in the book he tries to when he's at the um peacekeeper base he actually um tries to get everyone to kill all the mocking jays but they can't because they're too widespread so he just finds them everywhere um and i really loved that in the book it would have been cool to explore that in the film i you know it's a long book obviously they had to cut a lot of things out for the film um or split it into two parts which i actually think could have been maybe a better I don't know. I don't know. It was just the film was fine. It was fine. But after reading Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, I ended up liking the film less than I in initially did. Like at first I was like, you know, pretty good. And now I'm like, mm, very average. As for my thoughts on the book, I hated it. I hated it. It's so sad. Um, I think part of why I feel so strongly about my dislike for this book is that I came off the high of having just read the whole Hunger Games series, which is so good. And this felt like it was written by a different author. I think it did have a really promising start, as I had mentioned in the previous clips, but um, no, I didn't find any of the characters particularly appealing. Lucy Gray was fine, just didn't really connect with her. Um, Sejanus, I probably liked the most, but uh, just he was, his character was very one note in the sense that it was like clearly a stand-in for a certain way of thinking. Um, and he didn't have much personality. He didn't have a personality apart from his thoughts regarding the district and the capital like there wasn't like more to his character it didn't feel fleshed out um I would ar argue that that's maybe the same for Lucy Gray she is like a likable character but I just didn't like it didn't go super deeply into her character and to be honest I don't think that was the book's aim um the romance between Corio and Lucy Gray is very insta-lovey. I found this both in the movie and in the book. Um, and I kind of get it being this way because 
you know, Lucy Gray is about to die. She thinks she's like going to the Hunger Games and whatever. She also flirts with everyone. And when she flirts with Corio, he's like, oh my God, she's so different. She's so not like other girls. Um, but what Coriolanus really likes about Lucy Gray is that she, yeah, that she's different. And also he um, just really wants someone to control. Um, and yeah, there's lots of long passages in the book where he's like, she's mine. I am hers, but like, she is mine. Um, he's extremely possessive of her. He, once she says something to him, like, oh, like you and I, it's like destiny. And he thinks to himself, like, that's good that she thinks that because now she won't leave me if she thinks it's destiny. Concerning, so I actually, I liked that because it made sense with who Snow is. And so in that sense, I think Corio was a lot um, more interested in Lucy Gray as an idea and like an object rather than a person which is part of why maybe it was so insta-love. However, I just hate insta-love. Um, yeah. Where was the back and forth? Where was... I, I don't know. It, yeah. So I was sort of like... I also really hate when novels do this thing where they just jump into like, we're in love. The whole entire book of Songbirds and Snakes takes place over like two months. And they're in love. I did like that, like we see Corio's tendency towards obsession kind of illustrated in the way that he is obsessed with Lucy Gray and with power. Um, he clearly does not care about Lucy Gray that much though, because as soon as he finds out that he's accepted for this officer school thing, which they also took out of the movie. He like finds that out the day he's supposed to run away with Lucy Gray. And then he's like, oh my God, do I still have to run away? Like I would just so, so much rather be an officer and get my social capital back. Um, it's not even like a little bit of a debate for him. So he has one true love and that is money and power. Okay, two, two, namely power. But Lucy Gray is not one of them. So also I think that that's a thing about the film that a lot of people misunderstand because they haven't read the book. Is like, I've seen comments of people online being like, oh my God, like Lucy Gray just like shook Coriolana so much that um, he's like still obsessed with her during Katniss's time. And like, that's why Katniss bothers him so much. And I don't think it's actually Lucy Gray. I think it's what she represents. She is also like a Mockingjay where he like, he can't control her. Um, and in the end, we don't know what becomes of her. Like she just kind of runs off and then um, she's gone. And yeah, so she's just something he can't control. And I guess that's how she's similar to Katniss. And also Katniss sings some of her songs. So it might've taken him back to that place where he felt like, Oh my god who is this like i can't control her um but yeah i don't i don't see it as some sort of great love story i did mention before that i had the barnes and noble exclusive edition um which has an interview with suzanne collins at the end of it and i really liked the interview it made me respect what she was trying to do with the book a lot more um, she talks about different theories about human nature as it's connected to war. So there's this theory that like Dr. Gall has in the novel and that Coriolanus adopts, which is that humans are essentially bad and that if we were left to our own devices without a governing power, we were basically, it would be like the Hunger Games. Um, and then there's like Lucy Gray's perspective, which is that um, humans are necessarily good and whatnot so I really did appreciate that discussion and I read it after I finished the book and I was like okay okay I see what she was doing I see that she really thought about those ideas but I just didn't enjoy my reading experience I was bored a lot of the time the pacing I felt like was really choppy sometimes it would feel pretty fast paced and then other times like very, very slow. I, I didn't care because I didn't really care about the characters. Oh, and I don't know 
positive note, one thing I did really like about the book was how Coriolanus found music a um, disruptive and invasive thing in his life, um, which, you know, he, he like at one point in the book thinks to himself, oh my god, there's like all this music in my life now, and he, it really annoys him. Um, so I do like how music is used to kind of, it's used by Lucy Gray to express herself and, um, Coriolanus spends a lot of time pondering kind of like the meanings of her songs, uh, which is something that also happens in The Hunger Games. I really like that aspect of the book and also seeing how some of the songs in The Hunger Games series, like where they came from, uh, Lucy Gray. So that was cool, but overall very sad if I had to rate it probably two stars 2.5 stars so that was really sad but um anyway in general though I've had like the best time reading these books and I'm so happy that I did um as well as watching the films it was just a really fun experience I hope you enjoyed this video if you did put a um bow and arrow emoji in the comments for Katniss. Um, also let me know in the comments below what you thought about In Songbirds and Snakes or any of the Hunger Games books. Um, I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions. Also if you'd like me to reread um, any other series or books because I'm trying to make that a thing on my channel I think. Um, you don't know what I've re read but um anything from that kind of era or like anything that you think I should read that you'd like to see a reading vlog of, I would really love that. Give this video a like if you liked it. Consider subscribing perhaps uh, if you want to see more from me and click the little notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload. Um, and with that, I will see you in my next video. Have a good day. Bye!